Now there are three modes for authentication on A-Series devices. The first mode is none. And this is where the prompt appears immediately after connecting. There's no authentication at all. That's what we're using currently. There's no authentication at all on this device. Password prompts for a common or shared password. This is kind of like a line password where the line, for example, the console has a password and all users accessing the console are prompted for that password. Scheme, which can be used with a local username and password database or using remote authentication such as Radius requires the use of a username and password. So you'll be prompted to enter a username and a password when connecting, for instance, to the console. If using local authentication, you need to create local users and passwords. So you essentially create a database of usernames and passwords on the router. For Radius authentication, you need to configure a Radius server and a Radius server or TACAC server would be required for the centralized authentication of users. Now at the moment, once again, if I quit out of the router, notice I'm connected to the console. If I hit enter, I gain immediate access to user mode or user context. System view allows me to gain full access to the router. I also have full privileges. So to lock down the console, I would type system view, and then I could use the command super and specify a password, for instance, for level three, and then I can decide whether to encrypt the password or leave the password in plain text. Now it's good practice to encrypt passwords. So I'm gonna encrypt a password of HP. Now you should be using a more secure password than that in the real world. But because this is a lab, I'm just gonna use a simple password like this. So that allows me to set the password for privilege level three. So if I logged in as a user with privilege level one and used the command super, after entering the password of HP, I would have privilege level three rights on this device. To set up a console password, I would type the command user interface and notice I can configure passwords or settings for various interfaces. The auxiliary port I've already mentioned that would allow you to connect a modem to the router for out of band access. The console is how we are connecting to the router at the moment. TTY lines are asynchronous serial user terminal interfaces typically used for modems or reverse telnet connections. VTY connections are used for telnet connections to the router. So in this case, I'm gonna configure the console. Notice there's only one console, so console zero. I'm gonna set the authentication mode in this case to none. So once again, none means there's no authentication. Password authentication means the same password is used by all users. So it's kind of like a line password and scheme is where a local username and password database is used. So I'm gonna use the option password. I'm then gonna set the authentication password using an encrypted password of HP. I could then quit and then do something similar on the aux or auxiliary port. A lot of people make the mistake of setting a password on the console, but they forget to set a password on the aux port. That means if I have physical access to your device, I can simply connect my console cable to the auxiliary port and gain access to your device. So make sure that you set passwords on both the console port and the auxiliary port. So in this case, I've set the password to HP on the aux, as well as the console port on this router. So I'm gonna quit, and notice now when I hit enter, I'm asked for a password. So I'm gonna enter my password of HP. Notice type system view. I'm now able to access the device, but only after entering a password. Telnet is not by default enabled on HP A-Series routers and switches. Rather than opening the system and requiring you to lock it down, the system is shipped 
locked down and you are required to open up options and configure options such as Telnet and SSH. They are not enabled by default. So logging into my router through the console, I'm gonna create a loopback interface on the router to prove this to you. Now loopback interface is a logical interface on the router that doesn't go down. So as an example, if I type interface loopback zero, I can give it an IP address of quadruple one. And in this case, I'm gonna give it a mask using the option 32, rather than typing 255, 255, 255, 255. A loopback uses a slash 32 mask. Now if I try and telnet from here, notice the command is not supported. If I quit and try and telnet, notice I don't get an option to telnet to an IP address. So as an example, if I try and telnet to myself, the router doesn't accept the command. But now if I telnet from user mode, notice the command is accepted, but notice it says failed to connect to remote host. Telnet is not enabled. So to enable Telnet, I have to go to system view, type the command Telnet server enable. Notice the Telnet server has started. And in this case, I'm gonna create a local username of admin. I am gonna allow this user to Telnet to the router. I'm gonna set the password using a cipher password of HP. And then I'm gonna go into the user interface, which in this case is the VTY lines, or Telnet lines, or virtual terminal lines. So in this case, it's zero to four. I'm enabling five Telnet lines on this router. Zero to four means that I have Telnet lines zero, one, two, three, and four. Thus, five people can telnet simultaneously to the router. I'm gonna specify the authentication mode as scheme, which means a username and password would be required. I'm also gonna allow an inbound protocol of telnet. So telnet is allowed to the router. Now in this example, I'm gonna allow the user to have a privilege level of three once they're authenticated against the Telnet lines. So that's how you set up Telnet on a router. That's quite a few steps just to enable Telnet. E-series devices have Telnet enabled by default. No configuration is required. But here notice the devices are locked down. You have to do quite a bit of configuration just to allow a user to Telnet to the router. So now let's see if we can Telnet to the router. So Telnet 1.1.1. Notice we are prompted for a username, which in our case is admin. The password is HP. And notice we are able to Telnet to the router. Here it says admin login from VTY, admin logged in from quadruple one. Now we are Telneting to ourselves, so we'll see our own IP address in the output here. If I quit, Notice here you can see that admin was logged out and I've also seen that the connection was closed. I'm seeing both the output for the server and client because I'm telnetting to myself. But notice that's how you set up telnet on an HP A-series router. So now let's configure an IP address of 192.168.1.1 on the gigabit 00 interface on the router. That will allow me to telnet to the router from a PC, which means I no longer have to configure the router via the console, which also means that it'll be a lot quieter when doing these recordings. So rather than having the router right next to me making a lot of noise, I'll be able to telnet to the router remotely. So notice I'm on the console of the router. Put in my password, which is the console password, top system view, Go interface gigabit 00 and then I can type the command IP address 192.168.1.1 with the relevant mask. Now what's really nice on HP 
A-series devices is that I can type the command display this, which will show me the configuration of just this interface. Now you can see that this interface is a routed interface. Notice it says port link mode route. That means that I can type IP addresses directly on the interface as I've done here. Now typing the command display interface brief, I can see that there are layer two interfaces. So as an example, if I try to go on to interface two slash zero and type the command IP address, notice the command is not accepted. If I try and use the notice the command link port link mode route mode allows me to change the mode of the interface. And now I can, for example, put an IP address directly on this interface. So typing the command display this, notice the interface is now acting as a routed interface and I can put an IP address directly on the interface. If I change that to port link mode bridge, notice what happens. Display this, you can see the IP address is no longer on the interface. And once again, if I try and type the command IP address, it's not accepted. This is a layer two interface and a layer two interface cannot have an IP address configured directly on it. It needs to be configured by using a VLAN in a similar way to how you configure E-series switches. I'll show you an example of that in a moment, but for now I've configured an IP address on my router on gigabit 0 slash 0 of 192.168.1.1. Let's configure an IP address on the PC.